Hi and welcome to another Unity 3D tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to look at creating a simulation of a solar system and I don't just mean creating a sun with a whole bunch of planets rotating around the outside because you could do that by simulating the movement around an ellipse but this one is an evolving one as you can see on the screen here and we're going to use Newtonian physics to make this actually evolve. So any of this rotating around that sun that you can see on the screen, that's not programmed in. That's just a result of the different forces that it exerted on planets. An orbit is established between two objects exerting gravity on one another. In this case, we have a large object or the sun and the smaller one of the planet. The force that binds the sun to the planet is described by Newton's law of universal gravitation or F equals G m1 times m2 divided by r squared, where m1 and m2 are the masses of the bodies, that would be the sun and the planet, r is the distance between them, and g is the gravitational constant, which is something like 6.674 multiplied by 10 to the negative 11. Now, if you just create a couple of rigid bodies in unity and add this force between them, what you end up with is something like this, which in no way resembles an orbit. So where does the orbital action come from? Well, the orbiting body has to have its own initial force or sideways force. And it's this sideways force when combined with the gravitational force that will give you a curved motion. And that is what you end up with as an orbit. So let's get started making this in Unity. First of all, you need a new Unity project. In this project, I've got the camera and I've set its background as black to, I guess, imitate space. It's just got a solid color on it. There's a sun and it doesn't matter where you put the sun, but it's going to be our center of gravitational pull. The sun in this case is just a sphere that I've added in. Now, the default sphere you get with Unity has a collider on it. Turn that off. Uh, if you put it on, you're going to end up with planets bumping into the sun and getting flung off into space, which might be a really cool result if you want to try that later on. But initially, I've got that turned off. But I still will let the planets themselves collide with each other. And I've got some script att attached to it, and we'll get around to writing that in a moment. But you'll also, um, if you want to, I guess, put a material on it. In this case, it's yellow. Now, you might be totally amazed to see how nice and clean my assets folder is because usually I lay everything out in here so that you can see it. But I ended up with a bunch of textures and materials, so I thought I'd hide them inside this folder. You don't have to put textures on your planets or even the sun. You can just go with straight spheres if you want to get it working. But... If you want to follow what I've done, I've got four different planets that I created. Now, they're just the basic standard shader with opaque setting. And for the albedo texture, I've gone onto Google and just Googled some sort of planet textures. And they're basically, if I can just make this one here, I think this one's Mars or something. They look like that when you get them. They'll be a, a rectangle and they will have the stripes across the surface of them, which will then wrap around the sphere. So grab a whole bunch of those, and you can make more than four if you want a lot of different looking planets. Besides that, as I said, I've got the yellow material, which, which is just a yellow color. And I've also created a trail, which is going to leave these nice sort of wispy ribbons behind the planets. And that's just so that you can see the circular and elliptical orbits that start to form. So that particular trail texture, let's have a look at it. It's the standard shader. Its rendering mode is set to transparent. And on it, I've put an image. Now it was a black and white image, uh, or sorry, black and blue image. And I've set it to be alpha halfway down. So if you click on the color there, I've turned my alpha right down. To get the black part of the image to be alpha or transparent, let me find it's this one here. In your settings, you need to make sure that you've got alpha source for that texture set from grayscale 
and that you've clicked alpha is transparency. And then also make sure that you go apply. That will allow you to get this nice um, transparent effect on the trails that are behind the planets. Alright, so that's all the setup. Now it's time to write a code. You'll need C sharp script called Orbiters. And that script, after you've created it with uh, right click create C sharp script, you can drag and drop onto your sun. And you'll see that I've got mine already there. Let's go in and start writing this code. So we'll open that up. At the very top, we've got just the usuals, which will already be in there. Then we have our class for orbiters, which is mono behavior. Now I must say before I go through this code is that I started it setting it up for the Unity job system. And I didn't get as far as creating any of the um, jobs that I was going to do because I was going to try and create lots and lots and lots of spheres uh, when I got slightly distracted with Newtonian physics and orbits. So that's the way this is set up as far as the arrays of spheres goes. And it actually makes the whole job a lot easier to loop through them and move them around. First of all, we need some public variables that you can set in the inspector and also a sign for materials. We have a sphere count, so you can change how many spheres get created. Then you want a max radius. So when these spheres first get created, they're going to be around the sun at a certain distance. So again, this is something that you can set if you want them all like all bunched up really, really close, you could set this to like 50. For example, if you want them all spread out, you'd have a larger number. Then we have an array for our spheres. Now, I do not know why I've got this public. It doesn't need to be accessed from outside. Um, probably just a force of habit. I've typed that in there. Then we have a public array of materials. And this is where you're going to assign all of those planet materials that we created just before. And then also another material to put the trail material. So the one that's going to create the trails behind your moving objects will go in there. Once you've got that, if you just quickly save at this point, go back into Unity and add that to your sun. You can see in my code where I've got the sphere count. In this case, I've set mine up to 5000 here and I have a max radius of 100. The materials, there's four of them that I've assigned and these are the different planet materials that we created a moment ago. And the last one is the trail. So just drag and drop your materials from your assets folder onto these to populate them so that we can then use them on the planets. Now back to the code. In the awake, we will create our array of game objects using the sphere count that we've put in, okay, which is this first one up here, to set the size of the array. And then we will set it to our spheres game object array. In the start, we will then run a create. So spheres will be equal to create spheres, where this particular method we're about to write takes the number of spheres and also the maximum radius. So create spheres is going to create each instance of the planet as well as set its position in space. Right, so let's just go and have a look at that. Now create spheres, see if I can fit this whole thing in for you so you can see it all. Yep, that's pretty much it, except for the swiggly bracket at the bottom that's just kind of dropping off the screen there. So first of all, we're creating a temporary array of spheres, which we will populate and then use to return all of the spheres we've created. We'll create then a sphere to copy and this sphere will be our prefab. So rather than having a prefab that's going to be sitting in your assets that you could use, we will just create this on the fly with code. We're going to use as the basis a uh, primitive, a unity primitive, which is just our sphere type. So we'll put that into sphere to copy. Now we will also at this point, any primitive that you construct Okay, so if you right click in your hierarchy and add a 3D object and you get a cube or sphere or whatever, they 
come with a certain number of things already on them. So you get like the mesh render, the transform, and you also get a collider. We also want a rigid body because we want to be able to push it around using force and the physics system. So to do that, we're going to call our prefab, so sphere to copy, that we're going to copy, dot add component rigid body. Now that rigid body we need to grab hold of at the same time because we want to turn off its gravity. And you can do that with rb, rigid body dot use gravity equals false. So now that we have our prefab sphere that we've going to uh, copy around into our array, we're then going to loop through our array count number of times. So, you know, 500 or 5,000 or whatever you've got it set to. Each time we will instantiate a copy of the sphere from the prefab we've created. We will then set its position. So the new instantiated spheres transform dot position is going to be equal to this dot transform dot position which is the position of the sun because we want the spheres to be around the sun so this will be relative to the sun and then to the sun's position we're going to add a vector 3 which is random in its location in the x it will be between minus max radius and positive max radius in the y it's going to be restricted to minus 10 10 and then in the z it's going to be max radius uh, negative max radius to positive max radius so in this case this whole thing here is basically covering a flattened cube kind of shape around the transform position of the sun the reason being is just totally personal preference that I was cr trying to like make a more of a squashed disc of planets that were sitting around the sun which only have a very short range in height above and below where that position is you could set this to max radius um, negative and positive in here too if you want them to be equal distance in all axes around the sun it really doesn't make a lot of difference but that's just the settings that I've got. Now with the sphere, we will also set its local scale. So that means you can just create different sized planets. So we're getting hold of its local scale and multiplying it, whatever it is, by a random value, which is anywhere from half to one, which is what it already is set at by default. Now the sun that I've added, and I didn't tell you this, but I've scaled it up to 2 in the x, y, and z directions. So any planets that you create, in this case, are only ever going to be 1 in size, and therefore they will always appear to be smaller than the sun. The sun itself is not being affected by any gravitational pull at all because we haven't put a rigid body on it. So it's not going to go moving around. Again, that could be another interesting thing that you try out. Right, so we've, we've done that. Let's go down now and set our material that we want to put on our planet. So first of all, we get our spheres renderer dot material, and then we set it to one of those materials in the material array that we're passing in. So we're accessing that array at some random position in the array between index zero and the number of materials in there. So that each one you get be completely random as far as the texture that's on it. Now because we're creating this sphere from scratch with code we don't have the luxury of adding the trail renderer as a component in your inspector so we have to do that by hand as well. To do that means adding it and then setting a whole bunch of different values that belong to your trail renderer. So the first thing to do is create your trail renderer and add it onto the sphere. So add component trail renderer, grab hold of it, and then we're going to set the time. This is how long our trail will last for. So if you want longer trails, longer ribbons coming out of your planets, you would make this much bigger. And of course, the longer they are, the more you're going to see the arcs that are forming as they move around in the environment. 
Now we also want to set a start width. This is the, obviously it's the width of the ribbon at the position it is where it's attached to your planet. So I've got it at point one, which is quite small, and you will see my planets have a little tiny tail that sticks out of them as far as the width is concerned. The end width is how wide it is at the end of the ribbon at time one along its length. I want it to be zero. So this is going to give us like a triangular one. It tapers off towards the end. Next, we can set the material. And you do have to set a material if you want to modify the values of the colors that are on the trail as well. Now you can see underneath, I've done that, the start color and the end color, because as it thins out away from the planet, it can start out at having like, in this case, I've got a yellow hue that's sitting over the top with a very slight transparency added. And then right at the end, its color is going to be adding a, a nothing, basically. It's black, but it's fully transparent, so you shouldn't be able to see it. So not only will it taper out towards the end in size, but it will fade out in visuality towards its tail as well. Right, so then once you've got this prefab that you've instantiated all set up, ready to go, you then put it into your spheres array at the particular index you're at. So this is going to loop around this entire long loop, creating all of these spheres and adding them into your array. After that, we will destroy our little prefab copy that we created because we're not using it for anything. And then we will return the spheres and these spheres will then return back up to start and then go sitting into this array where we can use them later elsewhere. All right, so with all that, nothing in your update. So this is the bottom of my code now. Save it and we'll switch back to Unity and we're going to press play. This will create all those spheres and there you go, you can see them all. So this is the height of 10 range above and below my sun. You can see how they're much thicker towards the center. And if we go over into our scene view, and just zoom out, there's the sun. You'll be able to see the box of planets that are created around it. So the X and the Z are the same, and the Y is restricted to there. With that done, we will come back in part two and start adding some motion to our planets. Thanks for watching. Please support the development of more superb online learning content by subscribing. And as always, visit holistic3d.com to learn more about awesome games development books and tutorials.